Alright, alright, alright. Okay. I just had to check because I'm like, I look really pale. You look pale. <laughs> really? I mean, I get it, I'm white, but... You're not that white. <laughs> I felt like the... Around my eyes just look really, like, white. Really? But maybe it's just the lighting. Maybe it's that highlight powder. That too. <laughs> Why? But I have my money. Something I just bought a shot. That's all I know. Points. Points. You know when we're not fortunate enough to be playing the great non-union stages of America. <laughs> we have to have that um, survival job. That job that helps us get by while we audition and pursue the career path we have come to this city for. Like a lot of people think that, oh, you get that one acting job you're and you're set. You're fat. That's not true. We both have worked very successful shows. <clears throat> we know plenty of people who have as well, but there are times where that show ends and then we have to figure out what's the next thing. We don't just jump from show to show. If you can do that, God bless your ministry. There's truly That's a 1%. Most actors get a show. They work that show for a few months, maybe a couple years, mm -hmm. depending on the timeline of the show. But in the in-between time, we have to do different jobs just to be able to pay our rent, pay our bills, be able to eat. Because food is good. I don't know about you, though. <laughs> Not lately. You know, it's kind of stopped. Um, no. <laughs> My first two and a half years in the city, I was mainly training. So I had a desk job, a day job, a nine to five sort of situation. After I booked my first gig that took me out of that, when I came back, I had to get a different form of employment. If it's a solid nine to five, like you can't leave the office, probably not gonna be auditioning. Flexibility is key. The first job I did, I went back to retail. I worked at American Apparel, night shift, stocking shelves, keeping the back stock in order. I worked for Trader Joe's, night shift. I currently work basically as a personal assistant. I do errands for people. And and um, I teach yoga. These are things that allow me the flexibility to still pay the rent, still train because training is important. The voice lessons, the dance classes, the acting classes, these all need to be happening in these times when you're not working. It's very important for the, a job to be able to do that or a combination of jobs. I'm doing a few different things right now. Every once in a while, you know, extra work comes up. I do a little background work and some people are opposed to that. My sentiment about that is no one can judge what you do unless they're planning to put some money in your pocket and pay your bills. So my first job here in New York City was, I used to be one of the flyer distributors in Times Square. I had to dress up as one of the characters of the show, be big and theatrical. So what's the strategy for you? Huh? <laughs> yeah, because that's totally not my personality. Totally not your personality at all. Um, I've had to do that for hours on end to make a little amount of money to be able to eat and pay rent. For a while, I had to work overnights at hotels. And I thought that would be easy for me because, one, I don't sleep anyway. I was working overnights, I was auditioning for shows in the morning, and I was doing a gig at night before I went to go work the overnights. My typical day would be I would wake up around maybe 5, 6 o'clock, have to be at my show which started at 8, and then do the show from 8 to about 10.30. Then from 10.30, I would have to get to work by 11.00. Then from 11 to about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning, I would have to go work that overnight shift at the hotel. I feel like doing that almost killed me. And then you might audition and after I, that. Yeah, and then I might audition after that. So that means that I would literally be up for 20 hours and maybe get two, four hours sleep sometime. Yeah, this actually happened. I almost passed out. That's how serious it was for me at that time. Were you like on IV of like monster energy drink or something? Honey, I was drinking Red Bull, like, coffee, <laughs> like, which might explain why I have heart palpitations now sometimes. Because I was there, like, anything that I felt that would help keep me up, I did. And I did jobs like that for about two years. It was just really, it was difficult. It got to a point where the job took over. And I just was like, okay, I can only work the job. The main thing to remember is the survival job is for survival. But with that in mind, don't get lost or caught up in it. I've, I've learned that there's jobs that will work with your schedule. There's jobs that will allow you to make your own schedule. 
So I ended up getting the job bartending where I was able to create my own schedule, which means I was still able to audition, still able to get out there, take classes, do this, do that, and have a, a sort of life. Right now I do catering. It's what I do as my main source of income. And the great thing I love about that job is that it's very flexible. If I know of an audition that I learned of last minute and I need the day to be able to go do that audition, I can do that. Then I also want to talk about the side hustle. Outside of acting, singing, and dancing, I have a passion and a talent for costume design. People come to me and they ask me to make custom-made things for them, whether it be a bodysuit, a, a Halloween costume, whatever, whatever. And I've costumed a few shows too. It doesn't always have to be about that main job that you're trying to get. There's ways to have an artistic outlet while you're still pursuing the job, that, like the gig that you're looking for, mm -hmm. and then work in the survival job as well. And some of them will pay you. Some of them you're just doing because it's exposure. It's really about understanding what is going to be beneficial for you in that moment. There was a person who I costume designed for. They're currently in a very hit Broadway show and they did their own one person show they came to me and asked me to costume design some of the pieces that they wear in the show for them and because of that I was able to meet one of my favorite directors and choreographers here on Broadway and then of course other connections that came from that people got to see my work so that's another way that I'm out there you also have to understand that if you are truly about singing dancing acting, performing, being on stage, being on film, whatever your thing is, you have to have laser vision for that. The side job, the side gig, the side hustle is simply a means to an end. We know plenty of people who come to New York with the big dream of mm -hmm. becoming an actor, becoming a star, whatever the case mm -hmm. may be, and they get caught up in, I have to survive. The job becomes the career. The job becomes the career. But it happens. But it happens. Like, it's a real thing. It happens. There are certain jobs that, that were good survival jobs. Mm -hmm. I didn't hate working them. I can't go back because I accepted a gig without enough notice for them. Mm -hmm. This is a gig that I need to accept. The paycheck is right. The role is right. The exposure is right. I'm doing it. I'm sorry I couldn't give you all the notice you needed. And that's their decision. I respect yeah. it. I can't go back and that's the that's just the way it is. But we also have to keep in mind is that a job is a job and a job is about making money for you as the individual working at the job but also for the company. Make the money. Don't let it make you. The only reason you're there is to help them make money. At the end of the day, they don't care if you have to go audition. Mm -hmm. All they care about is are you going to be available to help them make their money? Yes. And if you're not, it's unfortunate to say, but you're dispensable. So when we go in for these survival jobs and they ask two to three years of employment history, I'm like, on this one page? <laughs> on this one page. <laughs> we go from job, job to, to job, job to job. In typical middle America, which is where I'm from, I'm from Illinois. Tennessee. That would be frowned upon. But here, th those rules don't apply because there's so many people, they jump from job to job to job because they're an actor, they're a singer, they're a dancer, they're, and they do the job to survive for a little bit, but then they end up getting the gig. But then they have to go back and find another job. And that mm -hmm. happens so much too. It's really like pressing the restart button on your life. Every, Every single time. time you leave and come back. Yeah. With survival jobs and with living in this particular city, I'm sure this is the same in every city, you have to have a number. A number that is, this is what I need to make a month work somewhat comfortably. And if the numbers aren't adding up, maybe it's time to make a change. Yeah. For me, as long as the bills are paid, that's really what matters. But at the same time, I know that that's not what my life is all about. I knew that the jobs that I was working weren't going to get me where I needed to go. Like with this catering job, it's good money, it's flexible hours, it, uh, it pays me what I need. Mm -hmm. I, I was looking at it and I was like, this is the one I asked for. Mm -hmm. This is what I asked for. Manifestation. Where did I get this from? Where does one find this? I got this in H&M like a, a year ago. No way. Yeah. No. In the women's section. Of course. Okay. <laughs> like, I, I was doing a show in San Francisco and I needed mm -hmm. an opening night outfit. And I was like, my look is going to be the artist formerly known as Prince Eric. Hey, hey, if you liked what you saw, feel free to give us a like, share, comment, and most definitely subscribe so you don't miss the exciting content that is coming your way sooner than you think.